what is 5G? You've probably heard it means faster internet, and maybe you've seen the 5G symbol on your phone somewhere. And perhaps you've even heard about studies looking into whether 5G affects human health. In this case, that explains we're breaking down what you need to know about the research so far and what makes 5G different. Well, I say what it isn't, it isn't Wi-Fi. It's fifth generation. That's what 5G stands for, fifth generation. It's not a specific technology. It's actually a standard. The 5G defines a, a performance level for a network. That performance level is set by the International Telecommunication Union. It's an agency of the United Nations. The ITU sets the technical standards needed to keep the entire world communicating and connecting. They essentially say, hey, here's the level of performance needed to make sure everyone around the world is able to use all their ever advancing devices seamlessly. It's up to companies to put the technology in place. One of the requirements of 5G is to have a million devices supported within a square kilometer area. That's by definition. The giant brick cell phones of the 80s, that represented the first generation. Then came 2G, which allowed us to make calls and send text messages. 3G added internet access. Okay, so now we're getting into the discussion of what's really different between 4G and 5G. A huge goal of 5G is to increase capacity from 4G. More people have more devices and more ways to use them, and we want to use them everywhere. So we need more power. What 5G specifies now that 4G didn't do is what they call millimeter waves, which are up in the tens of gigahertz, you know, from 28 gigahertz up to 50 gigahertz. Millimeter waves help increase speed because they support a wider bandwidth, which allows those waves to send more data. But there's a problem with those millimeter waves. They don't propagate well. That means they don't travel through obstacles like walls, for example. So something is needed to give those waves more oomph. Smaller cells. Think of a cell as the area around an antenna where your device gets connectivity. In 5G, with millimeter waves, cells have gotten smaller and closer together to help transmit them further. You've probably seen the newer infrastructure, those rectangular boxes or nodes popping up on utility poles. And so you can overcome some of the propagation delays and inefficiencies. Instead of broadcasting, like you see on cell towers, maybe at 120 degrees, now you can narrow that beam and focus all that energy so you can go further. Think of it like narrowing the focus of a flashlight. You can focus it where you have a really bright, a wide beam, right, but you can't see as far. But you can take that and narrow that beam. Now you're taking all that light energy. You can see farther, but you can't see the angle. So the trajectory of those waves is now more precise. In 4G, there was a limit of eight antennas per node. Now in 5G, hundreds of smaller antennas are used, and typically they're closer to the ground. Which means those radio waves at higher frequencies and in a more narrow direction are closer to us. And that's raising questions about how exposure to those waves could impact human health. Alicia Beretta explains how a woman in Cibolo hopes to keep 5G away from her child's school. Tinjana Dobins was in the parent pickup line when she noticed construction on the sidewalk. May is when I saw the pole, May 6th. She's worried about radiation from the 5G box. And there's actually a warning on the box itself that reads, notice RF energy emitted by this device may exceed the FCC's general public exposure limits. Stay at least two feet away from the device. You're gonna be exposed to radiation and I get that, but there's some radiation that's, according to the FCC, that's safe and then there's some that's is concerning, like a 5G pole. Dobin says no warning was given by the city of Cibolo or the wireless provider. We found there are very few regulations for the placement and construction of 5G towers in the state of Texas. They seem to have their hands tied because of a clause called right away. We checked with the city of San Antonio too. Consistent with federal guidelines, San Antonio's right-of-way management division cannot restrict the installation of wireless tower poles in public rights-of-way more than 50 feet wide. But we don't allow proprietary poles for 5G nodes to be placed on streets that are less than 50 feet wide. So that pretty much keeps them out of residential areas. However, there are some regulations wireless companies must follow. There's an application that they have to make. Uh, they have to have proof of insurance, and then they have to be, make sure that they're only putting it in on infrastructure within the city's right of way. 
In Cibolo, the city successfully negotiated the removal of two towers not in compliance with their zoning guidelines. The city of San Antonio tells us it has, so far, never removed any nodes. There are 725 of them. The nodes are clustered in the downtown area and north and northwest sides. You will see more and more 5G nodes over the next few years because that is going to become the standard. Yet more people are challenging the standard. I think it's just important for AT&T or Verizon, whatever carrier, co uh, communicate with the community about the risk or you know or the, the non-risk give us an opportunity to know what their science is the studies have been done on the health impact of 5g how what's radiating from those antennas affects us but if you do a quick google search what you find can be confusing so is there proven consistent reason for concern what the research says and why there's a problem with it what case that explains continues next Welcome back to KSAT Explains here on the News at 6. We're answering questions about 5G. It means faster internet and better connectivity, but there are big health concerns for some. But is there proven consistent reason for concern? The short answer is so far, no. But the longer answer is that there are problems with the studies that have been done. They were not conducted properly, properly in the sense adequate controls were used. A uh, little over half those studies showed an effect, the other number of studies didn't. Uh, but again, each of those studies you can look at and say, well, I know it showed an effect, but you know, they didn't quite um, control for temperature, or they didn't really control for the type of animal that was being used, or you know, some other challenge with the study itself that makes it unreproducible. So when it's not reproducible in science, we generally uh, tend not to trust it. The studies looked at whether radiation from 5G technology could cause genetic damage. Just raising the temperature of a living tissue can damage the DNA. So if you aren't controlling properly for that, for that effect, then you might find a false uh, positive result. Because of those problems, we will not be able to conclude either way whether radio free 5G induces genetic damage or not. Dr. Vijay's latest publication highlights the need for more stringent, better controlled experiments. But research takes time. So let's talk about what we know right now. Every day as we walk through our environment, we're being bombarded by electromagnetic radiation, whether it's a radio station broadcasting, which is a pretty low energy, or a 5G that's broadcasting, which is a bit higher energy, or the sun itself, which we know is uh, very high energy. UVA is bombarding us and, and damaging our uh, DNA uh, regularly. But there's a much greater distance between us and the sun than us and 5G antennas. True, however, the sun is much, much more powerful than any uh, man-made source of, or human-made source of, uh, of radiation. It's not the higher frequencies used by millimeter waves in 5G that raise questions. They don't penetrate well. It's the transmission, all those smaller cells which create more opportunity for exposure. Exactly. If there is some 5G DNA damage, it's probably um, very small, and our bodies are normally repairing it in, in the way that they should. A publication from the National Institutes of Health in 2019 showed biological responses in some frequencies, but concluded that there was contradictory information and too few studies. In 2020, the World Health Organization noted no adverse health effect, but again, only a few studies. If you are concerned, there are some things you can do. My recommendation is use speakerphone or use Bluetooth, uh, which is connecting through a different type of, of radio wave, uh, and place the, the device itself that's the 5G device a little bit further from you. Even a foot or so can make a dramatic difference. The bottom line is there is an there is no proof either way whether 5G technology is safe or not. But researchers are still looking for that proof. We may very well have a very different uh, perspective on it in five years. You can find all of our KSAT Explained stories by scanning this QR code or go to ksat.com explains. Look for Explains Mondays at 630.